This is Josephine Gibbs reading Shakespeare's sonnet number 26. Lord of my love, to whom in vassalage their merit hath my duty strongly knit, to thee I send this written embassage, to witness duty, not to show my wit. Duty so great, which wit so poor as mine, may make seem bare in wanting words to show it. But that I hope some good conceit of thine, in thy soul's thought, all naked, will bestow it. Till whatsoever star that guides my moving, points on me graciously with fair aspect, and puts a pearl on my tattered loving, to show me worthy of thy sweet respect. Then may I dare to boast how I do love thee, till then not show my head, where thou mayst prove me. Now in this one, uh, in this sonnet, you could basically see how this is one of the best of the early sonnets, perhaps the finest so far, with the exception of the celebrated Sonnet 18. It is a narrative dedicated to lords, or and he preferred to himself as a vassal or someone who swears their allegiance to a higher power of the land. The strongest literary device here is when the author uses the words and phrases to create mental images for the reader, when he uses star that guides or puts a power on my tacit loving. He humbles himself completely in his sonnet. And there's also a thorough intrusion wherein he was self-consciously saying, I dare to boast how I do love thee. So these words shows that he was consciously saying that these things matters to him. Uh, the litute he used in his sonnet was using, uh, in thy soul's thought, all naked will bestow it. So the syntax is ambiguous here, but all naked must refer to the it being his poor wit mentioned at the end of the line, which since it looks back to the bare quality of his poor message. The analogy he uses in to thee, I send this written embassage to witness duty, not to show my wit. Duty so great, which wit so poor as mine. Um, not only uses a lot of repetition as in duty, my duty strongly knit or duty so great, but it's something that we see in many of the sonnets. The Shakespeare is trying eloquently to say that he really is bad with words. So in a way he's using it as a, as a sense of irony here because we see him as somebody who is quite good with manipulating words in the English language. So thank you for listening to my interpretation and analysis of William Shakespeare's Sonnet 26. Thank you for watching.